Hello, hello, Diana here. I am so excited to see your smile and face again, but if this is the first time I'm seeing it, please don't forget to subscribe. It's just right down here, bonk, and then hit the little bell icon so you don't miss any of the going ons around the funny farm. Um, don't like that start. That's, I don't like that one either. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I'm not think I'm even gonna talk about that. <laughs> Rewind. Okay, I am hoping to make this so that you learn from my mistakes. I love, love, love colony breeding and raising rabbits. Um, I have standard Rex, and I sell the majority of them. I would say probably three quarters of them sell and what doesn't sell ends up in my freezer. So it's fantastic because I love to see them go as pets, but then again, I also love the rabbit meat. Um, but I have learned a lot. At first I thought I'm just gonna put rabbits in a stall, call it a colony, they'll do their thing, and all is well. Let me tell you, I got cocky way too quick and I've lost countless amounts of babies over this. Um, so I have made so many mistakes, I had to make notes. So the first mistake I made is I had a doe in here um, that had babies all over the stall. So I came out one day and there's a half born baby and the afterbirth, which normally the doe will eat it all, but there was afterbirth and there was babies scattered all over. So I did the best I could. I managed to warm a couple of the babies and she out of, I believe she had seven, she was able to raise two of them. And my does and my buck are all in here together. So by nature, they will slow down during certain times of the year they're producing, but this doe didn't get pregnant again and I didn't she just, she was not a good mom and not a particularly friendly doe. So um, I don't feed unfriendly at the funny farm ever. So I don't care what you are. If you're not friendly, you're not staying at the funny farm. So Lola, rest her soul, is was stew. She was super tasty. But she, so that was my first problem was her having babies all over the colony. And I chalked it up with her being a bad mom. So then the next kit that we had was this doe, Sassy. She's a young doe. Um, her first kit was fantastic. She built a nest. Everything was peachy. So my both girls had babies and all was well. 31 days later, Sassy had another litter that was fantastic. I mean, excuse me, pretty girl did. And when Sassy had her litter, she did not pull any hair and never went back to him. So in the, in the morning, I find a nest full of freezing cold dead babies with no hair pulled, no nest necessarily, other than it was a group of dead babies. So what I thought at that point was that I just had too much confusion going on in here because at that point, there was probably 12 babies this size running around. Rico the buck was here and the two does. And I thought, ooh, there's just too much commotion. So I cleaned the whole stall. I create what I call the nursery colony across the barn is a whole nother stall for all of these babies when they're out of the nest. Um, it's a lot of people would call it for grow outs. Like I said, I sell a lot of them as pets, but the nursery is where all the young ones go so that these does can breed with a little bit more peace. So I spent the day and I separated all the babies and I cleaned this stall major mistake on my part because does are very sensitive. And when I did that, pretty girl who had 12 healthy babies buried her babies and didn't go back and they froze to death by the next morning. So it was too much commotion. So that is the second mistake I made. When you try to rectify a mistake, you gotta do it a whole lot slower. Ooh, I'm covering a lot. This is the best um, tip for you to know. 
because I searched all over YouTube looking for the answer to this and couldn't find it. So this is the reason that I wanted to get this video out for anybody that's colony raising because sometimes everything goes real smoothly and other times it is an absolute cluster. Okay, so last month I came out and Pretty Girl had had a nest with all these babies. There was like 11 or 12 of them. And I was super excited because both my does have babies within a day of each other, if not the same day. So Pretty Girl had hers. I was expecting another litter from Sassy considering I had lost the litter the month before, the entire litter. So I come out here and there are babies scattered all over the colony. And my buck Rico is running around chasing her. And Pretty Girl is running around chasing her. So this poor doe was unable to even give birth because the buck, let's face it, he was horny. And when people say they screw like rabbits, they ain't a joking because a rabbit can conceive and get will get bred and conceive while they're having a litter of babies, which is exactly what happened. Um, so he was chasing her around. She's trying to have babies because they were scattered all over. I managed to save only two because we are freezing cold here right now. It's seven degrees. We're freezing our butt off. Cameraman behind here is bitching. Quit your bitching back there, cameraman. So the babies were all over around. She still has blood all over. She hasn't even had a chance to make a nest or anything. So we, we catch Rico, the buck, and I put him in the nursery. And so that's the only time. She was still giving birth when I removed Rico. Um... But he was chasing her around, and then Pretty Girl chased her around so much that she couldn't get back to her nest to even take care of the baby she had. So three of them died, and then she only had two, and Pretty Girl took care of them. Pretty Girl wouldn't let her visit the nest. So um, Pretty Girl ended up raising both kids. Now here we are, 31 days later, and obviously while she was giving birth, Rico managed to do his business because yesterday, Sassy had a kit. But what I did to avoid all the confusion and having her have babies all over the colony was I did put her in the hutch last week so that she was used to it. A couple days ago, I put her nesting box in and in, I think it was four degrees day before yesterday when she had these babies, or yesterday she had these babies. But when I put my hand into the nest, the nest is warm, so I don't want to disturb her in any way, shape, or form. So Sassy successfully had a litter as long as she was left alone. Pretty girl, this morning, oh my gosh, last night it was the funniest thing. I knew pretty girl was getting ready to have babies. Last night at 11 o'clock, I came to check on Sassy's babies. And pretty girl is running around here collecting hay in her mouth for her nest. And then every time one of these cute little babies would hop by her, she'd leap at them and pull some of their hair. So they pull hair to make a nest. Well, she pulled hair off of her babies as well. So she's ingenuity, I guess. So she made a big nest and has a bunch of babies. But it is so cold here right now that I am not touching the babies to even see how big these kits are. I just put my hand in to make sure everything's moving and everything's warm. I don't feel any cold bodies and I'm not gonna disturb them. So that was the biggest lesson I've learned. If you have a very dominant doe, the more passive does will have a hard time um, having their kits. The buck is fantastic when he's in here. He um, babysits the babies. He eats with the babies. Hi, pretty girl. He is wonderful. So don't worry about your buck eating the babies. The problem I had is that with a passive doe, the buck's so worried about getting laid that she wasn't able to have her babies. Um, that doesn't seem to happen with pretty girl, but then again, pretty girl is pretty much the boss which is fantastic. So what I'm gonna do now, this is the lesson learned. One, your more passive does seclude them so they get a chance to quietly have their babies and then they're fantastic moms. So I have a little better idea of when to be expecting babies. I will now start just putting Rico in with my does for a couple of days and then be done. I love that um, all the babies 
are super friendly with Colony Living. You'll even see when you go over to my nursery, when I step in, all the babies run to my feet. It makes for very, very happy, friendly rabbits. And when you're selling rabbits as, as pets, it's fantastic because if people come here to the funny farm, they go in there and sit and they'll usually pick the rabbit that runs up to them and greets them. They're super friendly babies. So I don't want Sassy to miss out on all that just because she's kind of a passive doe. So when her babies are out of that nest, I'll put her and her babies down. That way they can socialize with Pretty Girl. They can socialize with that uh, Pretty Girl's kit and they'll all run up and run around and grow up a little bit together because I love the colony living. I hope that was a help. I hope that you are raising friendly, happy bunnies and also, 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 I have had a ton of people asking about these rabbits having babies in the winter. Just an FYI, rabbits handle the cold weather a whole lot better than they handle the heat. One of my does, her name was Bitchy Face, um, Bitchy Face died this summer in 114 degree weather trying to have a litter of babies. She had one born dead and she literally stroked out heart attack. I don't know what it was, but she just flat out died. She kind of squeaked a little bit and then never blinked again. It was just a, a problem with the heat. And I've heard a ton of people that have had problems with it. However, there's no problems with the cold. If I reach my hand in the nest, they're nice and warm. And it was four degrees the other day. It's seven degrees now. And these guys are all happy. Nobody's shaking. Nobody's cold. So don't worry about having babies in the winter. I put the heat lamp in here. I'm not sure that I need it. Like I said, the nests right now are nice and warm. But I am noticing that the bunnies this age, which these are 31 days old now, they are enjoying the heat lamp. So I'm going to leave it on. But the doe did not have, Pretty Girl did not have her kit underneath that heat lamp. So apparently she is not as impressed with the heat lamp as I thought she would be because I put it there in hopes she would have the babies under it. But she made a nice hairy nest. Oh, oh, here's another really cool thing she did. This litter was in that kennel. And now that she has the other babies, this litter has just automatically moved over to the heat lamp area. But this morning I come out and there's a big clump of nasty hair and poop and pee and crusty, yucky stuff. Well, what it is, is the debris that was in the kennel from her having in the, the nest from her having this litter. So it's really cute. She didn't just go having a new kit on top of the old kit's bedding. She pushed all that out and then put new hay in and pulled hair and made a new nest. So I just thought that was really cool. The dynamic of what these bunnies do is just, they're amazing creatures if you just let them be bunnies. So that's what I love about colony living. There'll be a link below to all the things I use in my colony, the waters, the feeders, um, things like that to make colony living with the rabbits easier. But let me tell you, this little bad boy right here is one of my favorite farm things. This is the coolest. So it's high and low. I absolutely love these because at night, like when you've got rabbits or I'm checking in nests or I'm feeding animals, and you don't have to carry a flashlight, it's fantastic. It's not ever, ever, ever that I found one that's rechargeable. They make life around a farm awesome. I'll see you on the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, stay surrounded by loved ones, and most of all, stay grateful for all of your blessings. Thank you so much.